look what's going on. Eggs are being laid as we speak. The amazing thing about this is that literally we only saw her locked what, once. I mean, she was locked for like two days with this male. Once. That was it. And it looks like we got some good eggs in there. I mean, I don't see slugs, that's for sure. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily, and I'm here with my beautiful daughter, Shayla. Say hi, Shayla. And we're going to be going into the snake. Well, I went into the snake room earlier. This is kind of like after. Uh, uh, and the green one has eggs. How did you know? He remembered. I told her. I, we had eggs today. That's right. Our green tree python. I was just showing it to you yesterday. Daddy. Yes. What's over there? Yeah, that's the guy. Is he working on those trees? Yeah. Okay. Let's that's let's talk hard. to let's talk to our audience because they don't know about the green tree python that laid the eggs today, right? But I'm gonna talk to those. <laughs> We're. I know you're. We'll talk to those guys later. But let's talk about the green tree python that we showed you yesterday, who was acting very uncomfortable. She did not want to lay on the perch. Uh, I'm not today. Everybody. Yeah, and we knew that something was up, right? We knew that that green tree python was gonna have some eggs soon, but yeah. we weren't sure when. And one day later, uh, she laid out. eggs. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna show those eggs, right? Yep. So we're gonna show you guys the eggs she laid, and while she was in the process of doing it, we caught her, and all that fun stuff. So stay tuned. Yeah. All right, taking the garbage out, and I just threw the garbage in the garbage pail, and there's a raccoon in there. <laughs> Let's see if we can see him. There he is. These raccoons are like obese here, because all they do is eat my garbage. Look at this. He's tamer than my uh, water monitor is, this guy. Unbelievable. Would you look at that? <laughs> let's, see. let's see Let's see if he can open up. Why don't you see how he opens my garbage pails? These guys are unbelievable. The dexterity they have are, they're like little humans. He didn't even get scared of me opening the garbage pail. He's like, yeah, whatever. And this is a small one. I've seen some really, really big ones here at my house. There's some, there's some definitely some bigger ones. This is like a, like a baby almost. Look at him. <laughs> Normally I'd be petrified of these guys, but this guy doesn't even care. He's like, ah, no big deal. I'm gonna leave him there. Let him eat some food. All right, yesterday we showed you my green tree python was acting weird, hanging out on the perches weird. And we knew that there's something was coming. So we put the egg box in here and look at what's going on. Eggs are being laid as we speak. The amazing thing about this is that literally we only saw her locked what, once. I mean, she was locked for like two days with this male. Once, that was it. And it looks like we got some good eggs in there. I mean, I don't see slugs, that's for sure. They are little eggs, they're really tiny. They're like quail eggs almost. And pretty cool, pretty psyched about this. So she decided not to use the egg box with the sphagnum moss. She wouldn't, she's just kind of sitting in the back there. So we're gonna let her lay her eggs. We don't know how many they're in there. Pablo claims he palpated 10, but we'll see if he's right. Possibly, yeah. number. Possibly nine. He said there might've been one, might've been a poop. Uh, so we'll let her go. We'll keep her nice and quiet. And I don't want to disturb her too much. And when she's done, we'll, uh, we'll show you what we got. And, it's a good thing you set up that incubator already. Well, you set up the uh, egg box, I should say. Pablo knew. We knew that she was going to probably do it in the next week, but man, one day. Pretty good. Pretty good delivery service we got on this. Let's see if we can get in there a little. Is, it, I don't know, is that her giving and laying another egg or just chilling out there? I think it's her head, actually. Pablo's got, I think, I'll put up a little video clip. I think he's got a video of one of the eggs coming out. All right, guys, I showed you before our green tree python was laying eggs. Well, it looks like she's done, which is, and it's kind of unusual because if you look in here, she's actually not sitting on the eggs. Come in here, I'll bring that camera in there. Show everyone, the eggs look good to me. I mean, they don't look like slugs, that's for sure. But maybe, I don't know if she's maybe just really tired. I mean, there's, what is it, like 13 eggs in there, I think we counted. That's a lot of eggs for that little, it's amazing. It just goes to show you that you don't need humongous green tree pythons. It's all about age and not feeding them too much, giving them the right climate conditions. 
and we got, it looks like 13 good eggs in there. So I'm gonna pull those out. They're, they're probably the size of, they're a little smaller, I think, than carpet python eggs. You know, we've bred a lot of carpet pythons here. They look similar, but they're a little on the smaller side, which I have to imagine the baby's gonna be small too, which is, I'm not looking forward to trying to get 13 babies to eat uh, once they do hatch. I hope they all hatch, you know, that's assuming that they all do hatch. And more than likely, probably some won't make it, but we'll see, you know, I'm, I'm pretty excited because like I said, the eggs do look pretty good here. Pull some of these out. That's a pretty nice looking egg. Um, we'll probably candle it and see if we can see some embryos in here so we can set them up properly. But I'm happy. Look, you see, I mean, I have a big hand, but that's a tiny, tiny egg. I mean, that's like like maybe a little bigger than a quail egg. <laughs> that's really small. That shows you, you know, how small these things are when they're born. I've never produced any green tree pythons. This is my first uh, uh, time I've ever bred them. But I'm super excited to see what they come out as. I mean, will they be yellow neonates? Will they be red neonates? Will we get both? Does it matter? I don't know. All right, I'm trying to get these eggs out from this female. Maybe Pablo can kneel down a little bit. And she is not laying on them, but she's certainly protecting those eggs. Watch this. <laughs> she, she's, she doesn't want to let me grab these things. I probably should take her out, but it's more fun this way. Try to steal her eggs. She's, she's definitely, I don't know why she's not sitting on it. Maybe, I think she's just really tired from laying them, to be honest with you. All right, I got them all. I got them all. Stole her eggs. It's like a, a velociraptor. I'm stealing her eggs. She's going to come haunt me later tonight. She's going to come and try to do, kill me. But all right, we, we got her. We're going to leave her alone. Maybe we should spray this down, Pablo, a little bit to give her some moisture in here. Yeah. We're going to candle these eggs, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to see what we got. Okay? Stay tuned. All right, 13 eggs, 13 embryos we saw with blood vessels, so that's a good sign. So potentially all 13 of these might actually hatch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All looking really nice and plump. Uh, we're going to put them in, the, we basically set them up very similar to the way we set up our, all our other python eggs. Wet sponges. This time uh, Pablo put the little diffuser in and he put the the hatch trays in there as well so we got both just to make sure the eggs don't touch the water um, but we want to make sure the moisture is really high 100 percent humidity in here so we're going to put a little saran wrap on top of this we're going to put the top on it we're going to make a little breeding card for this and we're going to put it in the incubator and from what we're told 87 degrees seems to be the uh, the number so we raised the our, our ball pipeline incubator which i usually keep a little lower i keep it at 86. Um, i like to incubate at lower temps and we're gonna raise it to 87, which is still in the acceptable range for ball pythons as well. And uh, we're gonna see what we get. I, I guess now I'm hearing what, about 50, 52 days? 47 to 52. 47 to uh, 52 days, so we'll see. Like I said, I don't, if it takes a little longer, that's fine. But we're gonna have a lot of little squirmy little worms pretty soon that we're gonna be feeding. So stay tuned for that and we'll keep you guys updated. <laughs> Here's a little interesting pairing as I'm cleaning here. I thought I'd show you guys. I produced this this girl probably in 2019. She's a black pastel pied, but she's also possible enchi, yellow belly, and hurricane. Now I would probably say yellow belly just by the jaggedness of the pattern on her. I would probably say no to enchi because you'd probably see a lot more pattern, less white. And I think there's a good chance that she's probably Hurricane, but we have to prove it out. We're breeding her to a Mandarin Hypo Phantom, so that should be an interesting pairing, right? Get some Phantom Mandarin into the uh, Black Pastel. Everything will be head pied. Be kind of cool. So, let's see what happens. Mandarin hypo works really works well when it's together. So we'll see what happens. Here's a beautiful little girl. This um, I produced her back in '19. She's a Mandarin coral glow pastel. Coral glow is the gene that uh, many people believe is the same as banana, and I think it is, allelically speaking, meaning that it's probably on the same location on the gene it's a little different it looks a little different and that could be just from being line bred differently but so this is coral glow mandarin which we love mandarin 
obviously, pastel. And I bred her to an interesting snake. I bred her to a Mario Desert Ghost. So let's let's put the mail in just for the right anyway. So that's the Mario Desert Ghost. You've seen him before. So Mario's incomplete dominant. So we could certainly get some Mario Mandarin Coral Glow stuff pastel. Then everything would be head, head Desert Ghost, you know, assuming that you know the breeding takes. She looks pretty big. I don't know. She they've been together for a while. She was supposed to. I was expecting, you know, her to go earlier this year, but you never know. She might give us a clutch before the end of the year. It's, it's, it's definitely a possibility. Um, I think it's a nice breeding. I, I'd like to see what Mario's a, a pattern reducer. Uh, it lightens things up. I'd like to see what Mario looks like with uh, Coral Glow and Mandarin. I think that's going to be a nice little combination. Well, we're on the Mandarin rack, so we're going to see a lot of Mandarins. This is a Mandarin Fire. Just cleaned her tub. And she potentially might give us a clutch before the end of the year as well. I've been breeding her for the entire year to a leopard yellow belly clown. So trying to get some more cool genes into the um, Mandarin project. Get some more, you know, we already have some, I already have a visual Mandarin clown I've shown you, but I want to get some more stuff in there. And this would certainly be a way to get the fire in there, to get leopard in there. So, and of course, the yellow belly is always great to get in any clown project only makes it nicer and i love i love the way mandarin and fire work together because they kind of look a lot alike anyway you know fire is kind of very similar to hypo as well so mandarin and fire just look really really interesting especially when they were born it was really much redder too i just it's just like a real nice faded look imagine that in clown it's gonna be spectacular this girl is a girl I produced in 2020. She's part of the Rainbow Project. She's a super enchi hypo disco, 66% hit rainbow, 66% hit rainbow. I, I'm, you know, I kept her back because she was just so beautiful. You know, I wasn't sure if she's hit rainbow. Obviously, we're gonna have to prove that out. And you know, usually you won't hold back a snake. You know, who's got, you know the possibility of being something, especially when you're in, in, in deep into the project like I am with a lot of visuals, but I just said, you know what? The coloring on this snake is so good. And, and truth be told, in Het Rainbow stuff, you do get like this like glimmering looking goldish color. A lot of times you get like a little like flaking in there that you'll see. And so I just said, you know what? I really feel like this is gonna prove out to be Het Rainbow. I like the way she looks and I held her back. And so we've been breeding her. Hopefully we'll find out. I hope she gives us a clutch. She potentially could be Gravid as well. We've been breeding her all year. We didn't get anything from her, but she was a little on the younger side. We started her late in the season. So she could be another surprise before the end of the season. We might get something. Here's our beautiful Super Blade Clown who gave us a really nice clutch. Kind of like, I think it was in January of, this, of 2022. We got a really nice Hurricane Blade Clown clutch from her. I went in a slightly different direction this year. I went with the Super Nanny. I really like the way Nanny and Super Nanny Clowns look, so I said, you know what? A Super Nanny Blade Clown will be even kind of cooler, so we're trying to produce those this year, so hopefully she goes. Once again, she's on a good streak. Her first clutch was this past year, so I'm thinking, you know, usually females, like once they get in a, in, a, in a groove and they're settled in, they usually will, they can go every single year around the same time, so she's got the size. Let's see what she does. All right, we'll wrap up today with uh, this really beautiful female too that we're breeding. This is a pastel enchi asphalt or yellow belly, not sure which one it is. Um, she's also het for lavender and 50% het for hide. So we're looking to try to produce some lavender freeways, which I don't know if anyone's actually done yet. I don't think Justin's done it yet. Probably pretty close, I'm sure. We bred her to a freeway, het lav. So we got a, you know, 25% chance of producing lavender albinos. We have obviously probably, a, I would say, depending on what she is, I mean, we could potentially produce either super asphalt and freeways, or we can produce ivories and freeways, depending on whether she proves out to be asphalt or yellow belly. Because remember, you need an asphalt copy and a yellow belly copy from each parent to produce a freeway that acts like super. If you have two copies of asphalt, you produce super asphalt, which looks like a freeway. And then if you have two copies of the yellow belly gene, you will produce 
ivories, you know, which are those cystic looking snakes. So the goal is to produce either a super asphalt or a freeway lavender. That's, that's my goal at least. <laughs> I want to see what it looks like and I'm sure it'll be really cool with a lot of contrast and stuff like that. I've produced albino freeways and they were really nice. I can, the lavenders have to have more contrast because they're a little darker and they got more purples in them. So we'll see. I don't know if she's going to go. We've been breeding her for, for about a couple months. I think I've seen locks on them. She's a little on the small side. I think she's just probably barely good enough. She's still eating, so I think we missed her window this year. She might go early next year, so that's what I'm hoping for. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Shaylee, did you like the green tree python eggs? Yeah, she loves, she loves finding eggs, and I think in 52 days they're going to hatch, and then you're going to see little babies. And some of the babies will be red and some yellow. What do you, which ones do you think you're going to like better, the red or yellow ones? Yellow and black. You want yellow? And black. I don't think there's going to be any black ones. If there's black ones, we'll be very rich. <laughs> All right, well, anyway, hope you enjoyed today's video on the green tree python. That's my first clutch of green tree pythons. So, we just got a little interruption because Shayla had to pick what she wanted for dinner. What are you having for dinner tonight? Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese, is that your favorite? Yep. Shayla doesn't like to eat protein. She only likes uh, carbs and fat. <laughs> What's your favorite food? Butter? And pancakes. But <laughs> she likes um, a side of pancakes with her butter. That's really yeah. what she likes. All right, so we saw the green tree pythons. Okay, we saw them lay eggs. Now we're yeah. now we're officially we can officially call ourselves green tree python breeders now. Before yeah. we weren't. So that's really cool. I'm super psyched about yeah. that. Obviously, we see we have a, a ball pythons breeding now. The, the breeding season's in full effect. I still have not paired up all my ball pythons, but the the, the big ones and the consistent breeders are. But I, I I still have to you know pair up probably half my ball pythons still. Um, what? Yeah, you see the birds over there. It's a duck on the water. Is that a duck on the water? Yeah, yeah. That's, it might be like a bigger than a duck, but we have a lot of animals here, right? What did you think of the uh, raccoon from last night? There was a raccoon in the garden. They saw it. I showed the video. So, were you scared of that? No. No. I, you would have been scared if you were there. I was scared a little bit until I saw it, and then it, I realized it wasn't really being mean or anything like that. So, I knew it, it was being mean. If, yeah, I, I bet if I can, I bet I could probably train those raccoons. But you know, you don't do that because they could have rabies, and we and they're living in the wild, so we don't do but, that. But I want to have. But I want the baby baby too. Yeah, you like the baby raccoons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We saw some baby skunks, right, at, at Shane's pet store? Those are cool. Did you guys know you can have baby skunks? Oh, I want those. They're super, super cool. I want bio. You want everything you don't have. You want robo hamsters too, right? Yeah, I want robo hamsters. <laughs> and you want pigs, right? Yeah, I like pigs. Yeah. Oh, pigs. I, but, 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 but you like small pigs, like... Like small red. pigs are good, but the big, the small pigs get big, and they get to be big pigs, you know. But I want to train them. You're gonna train them, okay? And I like to train them. I want to get some chickens too. But I like and uh, quail. Chicken. That's. I, I, I like dolphins. Yeah, dolphins. Yeah, dolphins would be great if we can have them in the backyard. But I don't think we can do that. It's probably against the law. I like dolphins. Dolphins are very cool. I agree with you. If I had my dream, I'd have a grotto in my backyard with, with dolphins. And you see the... <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Shayla and I are going to go inside and eat some dinner, right? And, uh, and well, I want to see the eggs, though. I'll show you the eggs. In 52 days, hopefully we'll have some baby green tree pythons. Will, yeah! all, thir will all 13 eggs hatch? We don't know. We'll find out. If you like what you're seeing, guys, make sure you subscribe. Yeah! Hit that notification bell. Hit the like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.